Hi friends, greeting from Anamo Laboratories Private Limited in a series of common errors in clinical chemistry. Now let's take calcium and calcium specifically what estimated through calcium arsenazo reagent. Okay, before we go into the clinical chemistry errors, let us see how this calcium arsenazo reagent really reacts to estimate. Calcium which is present in the serum in presence of arsenazo 3 reagent converts into a violet color or purple color having a maximum absorbance at around 650 nanometer but you can use any wavelength around 620, 630 that's okay. Now let's come down to the kind of results which you can have a uh, errors in. There are three categories which you can find all the errors falling in. One is the result oriented, second one is reagent related errors and the third one is program related errors. Now let's come down to the results oriented kind of errors you can have. Again there are three or four categories only possible. You can have either low results, you can have high results, you can have sometime high sometime low that is fluctuating results and sometime your results are not as per clinician's expectation. Okay, important for you to watch in order to eliminate any of these kind of error is watch your factor. Factor is nothing but a calibrator concentration or a standard concentration divided by optical density when you run the assay. And that is a factor which you need to see that it is coming constant through and through your assay. If there is any deviation, you need to recalibrate. To make sure doubly further, run a control serum whose value is known to you and ensure that your calibrator or control values which are under consideration are lot specific referred to as the lot number and that methodology. If these two things are taken care of that means your factor and that is your control serum. If these two are taken care of most of the time your high or low results errors can be eliminated. Now next thing I would like to talk about is as far as the results are concerned is that calcium is a freely available contaminant in the laboratory wells and special emphasis on watching your glassware as far as possible use disposable ones disposable tip disposable uh, pipettes etc but important is that when you have a contamination which is unavoidable then best thing is rinse your glassware with 0.1 normal HCl and repeatedly thereafter followed by uh, distilled water to eliminate this and this glassware is now free of calcium ions and you can use that for getting a accurate results in your assays. Second type is reagent related. Now let's see what kind of errors you can have in the reagent. Abnormally colored reagent. See calcium arsenazo reagent per se is a reddish, dark reddish color. But if any contamination happens, it changes its color to something else. Reagent could become turbid if there is a huge contamination or reagent can become inactive if the pH or something has changed due to contamination again or reagent becomes insufficient in quantity while your last few mLs are taken into the pipe, air bubble sucks in. To avoid these kind of errors, the best thing is take the reagent into a beaker or a test tube, see against the light. Since this color is dark, so smaller the volume in a long test tube can give you an idea that your color is normal in the reagent, at the same time there are no particles and if you find any of such things, the best thing is to replace the reagent. Now let's come down to the program related errors. Reaction time and reaction temperature are critical issues. But as far as calcium arsenazo is concerned, the reaction time is very fast and it's outside. At 37 degree or room temperature doesn't make a difference in this. It reacts quickly with the reagent to give you a purple color. And that is to be monitored since the color is stable for one hour. Ensure that you take your absorbances within that period. Okay, calibrator concentration is the second one which is the most common error one can do. See, calibrator is a live serum from a third party 
having a value which is lot specific having a value which is reconstitution date wise specific okay calcium more or less is a stable compound however it is recommended that whenever you do your first aliquot or first reconstitution continued in the calibration cycle is concerned but ensure that the value of that control batch specific noted particularly from the vial and fed into the program very often it is found that the previous vials value is fed into the program and you are running the calibration using the new one it is bound to give you wrong results ensure that this happens accurately wavelength or the filter is the next important issue recommended wavelength is 650 nanometer but in many analyzers 650 nanometer is not available some of them have 600 some of them have 610 or 20 or 30 depending upon the analyzer manufacturer or <clears throat> any of these wavelengths above 600 nanometer calibration as well as sample run should be done on the same wavelength if that is taken care of your factor bound to be coming all right and the results will happen more or less accurate sample to reagent ratio is another important issue normally recommended sample to reagent ratio is 1 ml of reagent plus 20 microliter of sample you can exactly do it half of it that is 500 microliter of reagent and 10 microliter of sample that's perfectly all right it still gives you performance but ensure that whatever sample and reagent ratio you deviate as per the requirement of the analyzer or situation calibration should be done on the same ratio if the calibration is done on the same ratio and the sample is run on the same ratio there is very high possibility that you get your results accurate if you see the overall whole crux lies in the factor controlling every day's factor is monitored if it comes same or close by to every day's value then your results are more or less in an accuracy thank you very much for watching this video if you like it subscribe by pressing the bell icon thank you friends